Hello everyone, in this video we're going to see how fictitious forces like the centrifugal force and the Coriolis force arise in a rotating frame. And essentially, the question that we're asking is if we have a frame S prime, which is rotating with an angular velocity of omega relative to some inertial frame S, then what is the equation of motion of a particle as seen from S prime? So if you're an observer sitting stationary in frame S prime, co-rotating with S prime, how do you perceive the motion of a particle? And I guess more specifically, an equation of motion right, is an equation that links the acceleration of a particle to um, the forces acting on that particle. So in inertial frame, in an inertial frame, we would just have Newton's second law, right? F equals ma. Okay. So we're trying to find the equivalent of this in a rotating frame. So we derived, in the previous video, we derived a really useful relation for time derivatives in rotating and inertial frames. We found that d by dt in frame s, the inertial frame, is d by dt in frame s prime plus omega crossed with whatever vector you're taking the time derivative of. So this is an operator relation and we can use this to relatively easily answer the question that we're trying to answer here because we are interested in accelerations, right? Because that's what equations of motion are all about. We're interested in accelerations, so acceleration is the second time derivative of, uh, of a position vector, right? So let's just differentiate, let's take our position vector r and differentiate it twice with respect to time to get an acceleration. Uh, and let's do that in frame s. And essentially what we've done is applied this operator twice in succession, right? That's what the second, second derivative is. And so we can write that using our operator relationship as d by dt in s prime plus omega cross. And then we apply that operator a second time, d by dt in s prime plus omega cross. And then we apply that to our position vector r. Okay, now it's just a matter of expanding the brackets and tidying up our expression a bit. So let's do that. Let's expand the brackets. The first term, in fact, let me write this over on the left because this can get, uh, our equation can get quite, quite long. d2r by dt squared in frame s. The first term is going to come from the first term in the first bracket and the first term in the second bracket. So we're just applying d by dt in s prime twice in succession and we get d2r by dt squared in frame s prime. So the next term we're going to get is going to be first term in the first bracket d by dt in s prime and then we apply that to omega cross r. Okay so we took the first term uh, in the first bracket, second term in the second bracket and we got this term here. Okay so uh, let's go on to, we want four terms in total. The next term is going to be omega cross from here. And then let's take uh, the first term in the second bracket. So omega cross dr by dt in frame s prime. And our final term is actually going to be omega crossed with omega cross r. Okay, so two cross products there. Okay, so we can then use the product rule to simplify this second term a bit. Right, so let's just keep this first term as it is, d2r by dt squared in s prime. So because this is a product, we can use the product rule to differentiate it. So the first term is going to be d omega by dt in frame s prime crossed with r. So we leave the r as it is. Then we get another term, which is going to be omega cross dr by dt in s prime. But then notice that we actually already have this. This term here is exactly the same as the next term which is which is coming, right? This is the third term in our the right hand side of our equation. So we just got one of these from the product rule, but we already had one. And so we can combine those together because we've got two of them in total, right? So we can just say we've got two of those that let's put a factor of two in front of that. And then we still have our omega cross omega cross r at the end. So um, the last step is going to be rearrange this to make d2r by dt squared in s prime the subject because that is the acceleration uh, according to someone in frame s prime. So 
essentially we just have to take all of these terms over to the left hand side of our equation and if we do that uh, we are going to get d2r by dt squared in frame s prime is d2r by dt squared in frame s okay and then we subtract off d omega by dt in frame s prime crossed with r and we subtract off 2 omega cross dr by dt in s prime and we also subtract off omega cross omega cross r okay to turn it into an equation of motion right which involves forces we will want to multiply everything up by a factor of the mass of the particle m right so let's do that let's just put an m in front of everything m there um, m there and let's change this 2 into a 2m and we get an m there as well okay and so what we found is this first well the left hand side of our equation m d2r by dt squared in s prime we can write this um, as m a right where a is just the acceleration okay so according to an observer in s prime this left hand side is just the mass times the acceleration so how can we what can we do with these terms on the right hand side well notice that the first term here is m d2r by dt squared in s that is just going to be the force applied to the particle right because d2r by dt squared is evaluated in frame s here and frame s is an inertial frame where newton's second law applies right f equals ma and so we can just write that first term as f where f is the force acting um, on, on our particle then um, okay I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to this term uh, later in fact I'm gonna put that one at the end let's let's have a look at this third term um, notice that dr by dt in frame s prime is just the velocity of the particle according to our observer in frame s prime and so that term can be written as 2m omega or minus 2m omega cross v okay and then we've got our minus m omega cross omega cross r and then um, i'm gonna put that other term that i mentioned at the end right so m um, m and so because this whole thing is from the perspective of an observer in frame s prime um, now i'm gonna let's not bother to write this this s prime in in our final step so m d omega by dt uh, crossed with r okay and so what we found is that newton's second law is not actually obeyed right if it were if it were then we would have ma equals f but we don't we have all of this extra stuff and so because these other terms appear just added to the normal force term right we call all of these terms fictitious forces because we can think of it as though there are all of these well we can think of it as though these are actual forces because they're just being added on to to the to the force that we know is acting on the particle okay and we give each of these terms um, specific names right so this second term here uh, this is called the Coriolis force then this term here this is the centrifugal force this is probably the most widely widely known of these fictitious forces um, and then the one that is maybe least often discussed is this last term here this is the Euler force okay and so this is why dynamics in a rotating frame can look a bit weird because you get all, all of these uh, mysterious force like actions arising even if there are no actual forces acting on your particle so there we go that's how we can use this operator relationship that we derived in in a previous video um, to find the origin of of all of these various fictitious force terms okay and so what i'd like to do in the future is make a couple of videos where i look at each of these terms individually and kind of help you to, to gain some insight into into how they behave and how we can how we can understand them more intuitively